Hey, Dr. David Jockers here. Today I'm talking about the best high carb foods to include in your diet. Now, here's the caveat. If you're very metabolically inflexible, if you're really overweight, very insulin resistant, you might need to go on a very low carb ketogenic style diet for a period of time in order to get more metabolically flexible, in order to get more metabolically uh, insulin sensitive. However, if you're already very active, you're taking good care of your body, then consuming these foods right here from time to time, perhaps every day, can be extremely beneficial for your body. In fact, I consume some of these foods almost every single day. And so number one is fruit, okay? And I know fruit really gets a bad rap in the low carb community because they're like, well, it's high in sugar, high in fructose. However, there's credible benefits to fruit. And I'm gonna break down fruit into four different categories. Number one are berries. Berries are the lowest sugar and the highest nutrient density. They have the highest amount of polyphenols, which support your gut microbiome and help create a really strong, healthy microbiome and a healthy gut lining. So berries are powerful. They're also very good for reducing oxidative stress and inflammation in the system. So berries can be really helpful. Number two is astringent fruits. Astringent is kind of like the, the drying bitterness that you might get when you consume certain fruits. For example, think about pomegranate. If you've ever consumed a pomegranate or cranberry, it's very drying. Most kids, you know, if you give them the choice of consuming a Concord grape versus, uh, you know, um, a Granny Smith apple or cranberry, they're going to choose the, you know, the high sugar fruit. They want the, you know, the the red delicious apple versus the cranberry because they like the sugar. They want the sweetness. But the astringent fruits, the ones that have that bitterness, that drying effect are very high in compounds like oleic acid and quercetin, um, anthocyanins in some cases, that really benefit the microbiome, that are very good for liver detoxification, and they help really strengthen the mitochondria within our intestinal cell membrane. For example, oleic acid gets metabolized by something called acromansia mucinophilia within our gut, and it, get, it produces urolithin A, and urolithin A really dramatically increases the amount of healthy, stress-resilient mitochondria within the intestinal cells called the enterocytes in our, our, in our intestines and creates a stronger, more stress-resilient gut lining. And keeping inflammation under control, really the foundation of that is keeping our microbiome healthy and keeping our intestinal cells really strong and stress-resilient. So that oleic acid consumption is really beneficial there. We're gonna get that from that, those astringent fruits. Some of, some of the good examples there are gonna be cranberries. They're also very rich in quercetin. Quercetin is a zinc ionophore, which helps move zinc into cells. We know zinc is antiviral, um, really, really powerful for balancing hormones, um, keeping progesterone, testosterone, all of our sex hormones up, um, really helps with thyroid hormone conversion, so we get enough active thyroid hormone to activate our mitochondria. Zinc is just needed for so many different functions. Quercetin helps get into the cell. Quercetin is also very anti-inflammatory and, and uh, uh, buffers oxidative stress. So we find the quercetin and the oleic acid in things like cranberries, in muscadine grapes. So it's a different type of, it's not like the sweet grape that you buy at the grocery store. You can find Muscadine grapes, we grow them in our backyard. We have tons of muscadine grapes uh, in the fall and they're very, very tart, right? They have that astringent kind of uh, flavor to them. Pomegranate is one of the best ones when it comes to oleic acid, most, one of the most well-researched ones. Um, I already mentioned cranberries. Granny Smith apples, right? Kind of the sour apples, so good there. And so that's the astringent fruits. Hydrating fruits, one of the best benefits of consuming certain types of fruit is not necessarily the nutrients, although they, they do come with good nutrients. It's actually the structured water that's in them. There's a type of hydration that's in them where it's this structured form of water that interacts with our cells in a very unique way to really enhance cellular hydration, about 10 times better than just drinking normal filtered water that you know, we can get from, our, from the store or that you know, if we have a water filtration system, we get in our house. So consuming things like watermelon, for example, pineapple, apples, uh, pears, right? These are all very hydrating fruits that have this structured water. Now, some of them also have some key nutrients. The apple skin we mentioned, you know, has quercetin, particularly like the green apples are, are gonna be higher in 
that quercetin. You know, you have citrus fruit, oranges, very high in vitamin C, as well as the structured water. Um, you also have uh, bioflavonoids that are in the citrus. Pineapple is very rich in proteolytic enzymes like bromelain that help break down inflammatory proteins in our system. So there's a lot of other benefits that come in these hydrating fruits. Watermelon is very rich in vitamin C, potassium. However, one of the best benefits is the actual structured water, which again is a unique form of water that really deeply hydrates the cells, helps detoxify waste out of the cells. And this is why I love getting fruit in my diet on a daily basis for that structured water benefit. And then the fourth category is the prebiotic fruits. This is gonna be things like bananas. You know, bananas really have very little water in them. They're not providing the structured water. They have very little nutrients. You know, we talk about potassium, but they're not even a great source necessarily of potassium. They're primarily providing prebiotic fibers that really help support and benefit the gut microbiome. So they can be really helpful for bowel consistency, right? Helping improve your bowel movements if you're struggling with constipation, diarrhea, things like that, and just supporting the overall health and diversity of the microbiome. <clears throat> so that's where bananas, um, well, what else is in that category? That's gonna be like plantains are gonna be in that category. You know, so those are gonna be more of the prebiotic nature fruits. Again, less hydration in them, more of just kind of a prebiotic fiber uh, that's, that's in there. So those are fruits. Fruits are really probably my favorite way, you know, personally that I'm getting carbohydrates in my diet on a regular basis. Number two is gonna be root vegetables. Root vegetables, and some are more nutritious than others. My top ones are gonna be carrots and beets. Carrots and beets, very rich in uh, prebiotic fibers. Carrots are also very rich in beta carotene. They have a lot of different minerals in them. So they can be very, very good source of nutrients. Beets are very high in nitric acid, nitric oxide, basically nitric oxide compounds um, that help improve circulation in your body. Beets are also very, very good. They've got compounds that help support bile flow, right? And help open up and, and dilate the bile ducts in your liver to help support overall bile flow. Also very, very good for um, blood flow as well, right? So like the deep red, you know, we gotta think about, hey, you know, helping with blood, right? Um, blood building in general. And I mean, there's certain compounds that are in plants that, you know, we can almost recognize based on the color or the nature of the plant. So tomatoes have lycopene. They also have the um, structured water, which helps support circulation. Beets also have certain compounds that really help support circulation as well. So root vegetables, again, some are better than others. My favorite are carrots and um, and beets, but also you have things like sweet potatoes and regular potatoes that have prebiotic fibers that support the gut. Sweet potatoes also have beta carotene, that's what gives them that orange color. Um, and you can find red sweet potatoes, which have more anthocyanins in them that are powerful compounds that help support um, the, and help buffer oxidative stress. Right, so root vegetables are good, and then fermented drinks. So you're gonna find like, for example, coconut water has a, the perfect electrolyte balance. So if you know, again, it's a structured form of water. We talked about like watermelon. Coconut water is also structured water that helps deeply hydrate our body. And you get even more benefits when you ferment it and create something like coconut water kefir. Because the fermentation process, the bacteria go in and they break down some of the sugar and they turn it into B vitamins, enzymes, and enzymes, and there's also probiotics in there, right? Good symbiotic organisms that help support our gut. So, and there's also short chain fatty acids, there's different acids that help with blood sugar stability. So coconut water keeper is great. Beet kvass is another one where you have fermented beets. So again, it's lower sugar because the beets, beets in general, higher in carbs, the bacteria breaks it down, lowers the carb content, still higher in carbs, but now it also has the B vitamins. It also has um, all the postbiotics, right? And postbiotics are basically byproducts of fermentation. And these postbiotics, really great anti-inflammatory compounds. So we're getting that in the coconut water kefir, the beet kvass, the kombucha. Again, bacteria are eating sugar, producing postbiotic compounds that support um, and, and reduce inflammation in our system, support our digestive health, support uh, just overall um, <clears throat> vitality and, 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 and deep hydration within our cells. 
So these are the areas, <clears throat> if you're looking for the best overall health, obviously you can get carbohydrates from grains. You can get, you know, even sprouted grains, which are going to be better than regular grains like Ezekiel bread and stuff like that. And that could be fine, you know, for a certain percentage of your calories. However, I would recommend if you're looking for carbs, the best sources are going to be different categories of fruit, your root vegetables, and then your fermented drinks. So that's what you're looking for. Make sure you're exercising regularly. Make sure you're practicing some form of time-restricted feeding where you're condensing your eating window. Exercise along with time-restricted feeding and good sleep habits are going to give you more carbohydrate tolerance, meaning you're going to be able to consume more carbohydrates without developing insulin resistance and chronic inflammation if you do those things properly. So you condense your eating window, you really prioritize good quality deep sleep, and you get regular exercise, regular sun exposure, I should add in there as well, will all enhance your ability to metabolize carbohydrates in your system, keep your insulin levels down, stay metabolically flexible so you're able to burn fat for fuel, and you're able to tolerate a little bit more of these kind of great tasting, right, enjoyable, nutritious foods in your diet. So this is a great training. Guys, please share this with anybody that you know and that you care about. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, now is the time to do it and hit the bell button. That way you get notified whenever we put up a new video. Thank you guys so much for being a part of our community. We'll see you guys in the next training.